Uh, this will be uh, available on our website at www.infrascale.com. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. So what we're looking at here is the Infrascale dashboard. Uh, this is a single pane of glass that we offer to anybody that has the Infrascale products. Uh, whether it is our uh, disaster recovery solution, which we're going to be going over today, which is the hybrid uh, appliance-based cloud failover solution, or our, our direct-to-cloud solution, backing up laptops, mobile phones, small server environments. Any of those can be uh, managed directly through this web page. So since we're talking about our disaster recovery appliance solution, we can come over here to our appliances. And here we're going to be able to see any of the appliances that we may have at different sites. Um, so you'll see here that we have three different three different uh, appliances available to us. Um, so looking here, uh, again this is the Infrascale dashboard, you're able to see um, any of the appliances that you may have at different sites. This gives you a breakdown as far as which company that appliance belongs to, uh, which appliance it is, and, and the capacity for that particular appliance, how much space is being used, where your data is being replicated to, and then any alerts that you may need to know. So if there's any failures, any errors, those will pop up here in colorful little bubbles so that you can uh, know exactly what the issue is. You also have the manage option down here. So you have both manage your local appliance and manage your secondary, with secondary being the cloud target and so forth. Um, in order to manage the local, you can come over to your local appliance here and view any, uh, as, if you're, as if you were on the local site. Um, so this allows you to remotely manage these appliances without having to turn on a VPN, without having to uh, turn on, uh, you know, remember separate logins. All of it's available directly through uh, the Infrascale dashboard. Now here at the local appliance, just to give you an idea of what we capture, we capture VMware at the host level as well as the vCenter level and Hyper-V at the host level. So in those environments, a very simple deployment. Just they need, to, need to attach directly at the host and uh, capture all the guest information through that connection. There's no need to install an agent on each individual guest. For our physical machines, we have Windows, Linux, Mac, HP, UX, Novell Network, and a few other esoteric operating systems. So we show, should have you pretty well covered across the board with your internal environments. Um, if you see something on here that's, that you don't have covered, please feel free to let us know and I'm sure we'll have a, a, either a workaround or another agent that we can use to capture it. Now we do capture on a scheduled basis, so that's the full once a month, a differential once a week, and an incremental once a day. That's what about 70% of our users go with, but of course you can make it your own if you'd like. Uh, you can do weekly fulls and hourly incrementals, um, you can do bi-hourly, you can do uh, uh, even every 15 minutes, just depending on the type of data that we're trying to capture. Now once we've captured that data, we're then going to deduplicate it with our proprietary deduplication system. So what that does is a global block level deduplication of anything that lands on the local appliance. Uh, so your VMware data, your Hyper-V data, physical Windows, physical Linux, all of it's going to be deduplicated against all the other blocks that are on the storage array within that appliance. It's going to save you a lot of storage space locally, which of course is a great thing. But where it really shines is when we send it to the cloud. Instead of sending an entire, let's just say, one terabyte job over the WAN and then deduplicating that in the cloud, we send a block map and say, of the blocks that we're about to send you, what blocks do you actually need to rebuild this job on the back end so that we can restore it or boot it or, or, or uh, otherwise utilize that information? So instead of sending a terabyte over the WAN, we just send 5, 10, 15 uh, gigabytes worth of block level changes which means faster replication, much more storage space saved in the cloud as well. Now once we've replicated that data into the cloud, we can then come over to our cloud appliance or our cloud target uh, where we can download individual uh, files to our local machine, uh, where we can push back entire jobs to our local appliance, and then where we can perform cloud booting. So cloud booting is used in the instance of a site-wide failure, such as a power outage or a flood, um, and you need to have your machines available to you as quickly as possible. There's two different ways to boot these machines, or there's three different ways to boot these machines in the cloud. There's an individual boot, so very simply right-click and click boot. Choose which snapshot you'd like to boot from. Choose the resources you'd like to provide to this machine, and then click boot. 
That will boot this machine in the InfraScale cloud, utilizing our resources, not your production resources, uh, making it available to your end users. You also have boot groups. So you have the ability to boot uh, entire groups of machines all at once. Say if it's a, a VMware host and you want to boot all your VMs at the same time, or if you have uh, two VMs that are reliant on each other, maybe one has an application, the other one has a database on it, and you need to make sure that those machines come up at the same time, you can do that as well. Just right click and then click boot entire group. And then we have orchestration. Orchestration is our drag and drop way of uh, building out your DR test and DR, an actual DR scenario. So this allows you to predetermine how your, how your machines are going to boot in the cloud. So in the instance of an actual site-wide failure, failure, you're not coming over here and fighting uh, to figure out which machines you want to boot. You've already got it labeled out in here. It's also great for testing. So if you've ever done uh, testing of your backups, testing of your DR scenario, it's pretty intrusive. You need to take down your production machines. You need to or at least have a separate network, make sure that you, the machines that you're booting are not going to uh, filter in to your production network. With this, this allows you to just click Run and boot all these machines in the InfraScale cloud so that they will all talk to each other and you can verify that yes, they are in fact doing what they're supposed to be doing and you can access them using the VPN that we provide to you directly into our data center. So as you can see here, we have these machines booting up. 15 minute failover guarantee provided by InfraScale. And that's one of the lowest RTO uh, guarantees in the marketplace. I think it was the only one that we provide where it's actual guarantee that this machine will be available to you in under 15 minutes. And you can watch as these machines boot. This Ubuntu uh, VM is actually already booted and ready to go. Um, the Windows machines, of course, will take a little bit longer due to the nature of Windows. Once these machines are booted in the cloud, you can use the VPN that we provide to you. It's either a site-to-site -site or client-to-site -site VPN that allows you to access these machines in the cloud. You can provide that site-to-site -to, -site to your end users so that in the instance of a site-wide failure, all they need to do is turn on that VPN and they are now working on the machines that are booted in the InfraScale cloud. Um, now we do offer unlimited testing. So this is uh, testing done by, by yourself, by the admins of this, of this device. It allows you to test as many times as you want. So you could test once a day, once a week, once a quarter, however you'd like to do it, completely included with the InfraScale solution. Now once your users are on this, they're making changes to the VMs, and let's say you've gone ahead and you've uh, fixed all the issues at your local site and you're ready to do the restore back. So InfraScale does not charge you for time in the cloud either. So when you boot these machines, you're not worried about a clock. You don't have to put a clock up on your desk that makes you, you know, start sweating when it starts counting down. You've got as much time as you need in order to access your data in order to do your restores. So let's say that you're only up for a day. Maybe it's a power outage and you're, 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 they're making some repairs on the, on, the, on the grid and they've got that back up and running. You can leave this machi these machines up and running and have your users working from these, from these machines until Friday afternoon uh, so that you can make sure that um, you don't have to take down your production machines in order to uh, do your restores uh, because you're worried about time frames. You can leave this up until Friday afternoon when everybody goes home and then right click power off right click create backup job and that'll capture all the changes that were made to these VMs while they're booted in the cloud. You can then push that data back to the local appliance in a deduplicated format. So we're only going to push back the blocks that were changed while they're booted in the cloud. So let's say you're only down for an hour. If you're ready to come back up and do your restores, you're not pushing back an entire one, two terabyte machine to your local appliance and then doing your restores. You're only pushing back the block level changes from that hour. So much faster restores as well. Uh, so feel free to put any questions that you may have in the questions panel. And we're going to go ahead and jump back to the local appliance and dig down a little bit deeper. So as far as restores are concerned, for VMware and Hyper-V, we have Browse Restore. This allows you to mount a VMDK or VHD, VHDX file. Click on Contain Files here and we'll actually break that disk open and allow you to drill down into the file structure to pull out individual files or folders. 
So you can either download the file to your local machine or select multiple files and multiple folders, push those back to the same path on the same machine or any other path on any other machine that's attached to the appliance. So you don't need to push the data back to the, to the VM that it came from. If you feel that you need to move the file to another system, you absolutely have the capability to do so. Now for full restores, we have a couple of options available. You choose any snapshot to restore from, and then we can restore to an existing virtual machine, which is great for a couple of different reasons, but the main reason I like to talk about is ransomware. If you've ever gotten ransomware in a VM, the old way of dealing with it was pretty much nuke the VM, rebuild from scratch, re-network, and then provide it the backup data. With us, it's a lot simpler and a lot easier. All you need to do is choose an older snapshot that you know is not infected with the ransomware and restore that data over the existing VM. There's no need to rebuild. There's no need to take all the time and, and resources that it takes to rebuild and, and you know, reinstall Windows and so forth. All you need to do is just choose that VM and restore that existing that machine over that existing VM, uh, removing all the data that does not match with the snapshot that you chose. That, that would include the ransomware and any malware that had been provided during that time frame. We can, of course, create a brand new virtual machine. Just choose the host, data store, and resource pool that you'd like us to talk to, and we'll build out a default VM for you, powered on and connected to the network, all through Simple Wizard. Now, for your physical machines, you have your basic file and folder restores as well. Um, and then for a full restore, we have a recovery environment that you can boot into, much like a Windows PE environment that allows you to choose uh, which snapshot you want to restore from and restore that data from the appliance. Um, it is hardware independent, so if you want to move to like hardware, you can absolutely do so, um, giving you a wide range of restore options. Now for VMware and Hyper-V, we're capturing at the host level, so we're capturing the disks themselves. But for your physical machines like Windows, we have your basic file and folder, so you can choose which directories and drives that you want to capture. We also have system state and live bare metal, as well as exchange mailbox and database level recoveries and SQL server plugins, all available to you and included with the solution. Now under the edit tab here, you'll also see our job retentions. So our retention policies are quite a bit different in that they are not a global retention policy. So you can designate which machine you wanna keep for a specific amount of time. Uh, let's say you've got a particular machine that falls under a seven-year government regulation. You don't have to keep your entire site for seven years. You can just keep that machine for seven years, and the rest of your machines you can keep for a more modest, uh, you know, six-month or one-year, whatever your other retention policy may be. We even take it a step further, and we, we've removed the link between the local and cloud retention. So what that means is that if you have to keep that machine for seven years, you don't have to keep it locally for seven years. You can keep it locally for, let's say, three months, and then the rest of the time it can be stored in the cloud for that seven years, making sure you don't have this massive box on your site storing a bunch of data that, you, that is not critical to your your day-to-day -day production needs. You can have a nice slim box making sure that you have quick restore capabilities, and then the rest of the data can be stored uh, in the InfraScale cloud. Now here we have our local boot. So local boot is available, or you have both individual and group booting available on the local boot, as well as separate subnets and VLANs. So if you have a more intricate network, you can make sure to boot these machines on the correct network. We do have archive functionality. So what this allows you to do is this allows you to plug a USB 3.0 hard drive into the back of this appliance. You can then automatically or manually archive backups to that disk encrypt that disk and then eject it and send it off site to something like Iron Mountain or safety deposit box, co-location. You can then give it much like tape, but more modern. And to make sure you're up to date with everything that's going on with the appliance, we have an SNTP server built in that will send out emails based off of hardware triggers, replication concerns, daily weekly job concerns and job failures and so forth, making sure that you're completely up to date with what's going on on the appliance, as well as SNMP monitoring and ConnectWise integration should you need it. So just to recap everything that you get with our solution, you do get your backup solution, both local and to the cloud. You get your DR solution with that 15 minute failover, both local and cloud as well. 
you have a VPN solution directly into our data center, so you don't have to go to a third-party solution. Uh, make sure that they work with us and so forth. That's included as well. Um, you have your WAN acceleration solution with our deduplication technology, making sure that you don't have to send your entire site over and over and over again to the cloud. You send it once, and then all you do is send the chains blocks from there. Much faster replication. As well as 24-7 stateside support, so phone, email, and chat. And unlimited trainings. So trainings for you, trainings for whoever's going to be managing this device, uh, end users, and so forth. All, can be, uh, all is included with the Infrascale solution. So I'll go ahead and stop here. Uh, I'll wait a few minutes for some questions. And if there are no further questions, we'll go ahead and end the webinar at about 11.30. Okay? Uh, so please feel free to drop those questions in the question panel, and we'll go from there. Thank you.